Alright, here's the in-depth update of my 3D printed Miata hardtop. You can see it's still got a lot of putty work to be done. And it only sits so low because the seals are not on it yet. Right under here is supposed to be a seal to prevent it from getting into the cab. But you see it's, it's supposed to be about that tall. So you can see it sits a little low on the car. Once I get the weather seals under here, it's going to prop it up a little bit and give me a little more to work with. But you can see it barely has any putty on it right now. It's just really the shell still. You can still see it. But uh, I had to lay it flat, make sure it fit. And the fitment's phenomenal. I cannot believe the fitment. I mean, the windows are amazing, dude. This right here is going to be a, what is that? A bracket. I'm going to be using the performance bracket. It's not going to be using the, uh, the OEM Frankenstein one. It's going to be using the performance brackets. I'm going to sit here and try and fabricate. But there's going to be something right here. So imagine there's a wall right here. And then there's going to be a seal. Right, you know, in between that wall and the window, there's going to be a weather seal. So you roll your window up and it seals shut. The body line here still needs a little bit of work, you know, sanding, cutting, and adding some places. But the fitment is just phenomenal. I couldn't have made it turn out any better, to be honest. I mean, oh, let me see if I can get this thing. You know, I laid the putty like that, so it's going to cure like that. It's just crazy because I lift it up, boom, it almost clicks on to the seal. It almost clicks onto it. It's just crazy. I didn't expect it to do that, but it's just kind of the way it went. You see it sits low, but you can still see it. Once you add that weather gasket, it'll pop up past the windshield. Let me see. This side is fitted to the nines too, right to the window. Once you get a weather gasket in there, it'll sit, you know, squish right up into there. Same with this, and then same with this. On the other side, I'm gonna put a, let me see, I'll try and put a video up, but this bracket right here is going to squeeze this to the body, you know what I mean? It's not going to sit here and look like that and shake and rattle when it's mounted onto the car. It's going to use... Let me see. I, gotta, I, can't, I don't have it disassembled on this side. I got it disassembled on this side. So we're going to be using these performance bracket bolts. Right inside of there. I mean... That one. Well, there's two, but... I'm going to be using that. And then there's gonna be a bracket. I'll put a video up, like right here or something. And then it's gonna to mount to the body, squeeze it. No rattling or anything once you get your seals on. And there's gonna be another seal like rubber on the bottom of here, so it doesn't scratch my damn paint. But yeah, fitment, it's fitted. It's more than fitted, it just has to be body worked and then all that. When all is said and done, you know, when the seals are added, when it's all fitted, when all the putty work is done, the applications are really endless for this. I could fiberglass over this, pull a negative mold off of it, and then fiberglass inside of that, and just start replicating this design, you know? Uh, fiberglass, or if I don't want to do that, I could sit here and fiberglass the entire thing. Fiberglass the inside. Let me show you guys the inside. If I can, get this door open. I don't have handles right now. Let me show you. It is 3D printed, and I'll link the video in the description that shows how I printed these in a mesh pattern like this so the putty can squeeze right in between it. But yeah, that's the inside. You know, I mean, the applications are endless, dude. For fiberglass, for putty, for anything, if I could run it like this, I'd run it like this, but it's just not safe. It's not safe at all. So fiberglass and then what else, what else? Got the fiberglass, the seals, and then pop off the negative mold. And oh yeah, the mounts. So I'll put, you know, I think I already put it up, but I'll put it up again. Show the mounts, how they sit. They squeeze to the car, and then I'm gonna put a gasket. I don't have any mock-up things of that, but it's pretty straightforward, you know. Looking at it, looking at it like this, it's gonna be about this sick. And if, it, if I don't like that, I could always 3D print a spacer about this far, about my finger, you know. And stop it right there, and then have the seal run like that, but. Always a future thing, and then this one. This is the big thing right here. I'm gonna be running a 3D printed louver on my back window. So I'll put a video right here. But I CAD modeled that off of the acrylic back window and it fits to the nine. I'm gonna sit here and try and get it to fit up. I'm printing it right now, but once I get that all printed out and done, I'm actually gonna try and rivet it in just to see 
if it sags, how badly it sagged, you know, it's gonna fit that on. You know, I sat here and measured every single inch of this car to sit here and get it to fit as well as I could. So I'm not worried about that louver fitting. Once I get that louver made, I'm gonna sit here and rivet it in. I don't wanna sit here and mount it and just mount it. I wanna make sure that this didn't sag while I let it sit, you know. This part right here is really crucial. You need that to be flat. So I want, if it, the louver is gonna sit here and give me the accurate dimensions. I know this is accurate, but I just don't know how much it sagged. So I'll mount the louver and you know, if the louver is all the way up here, I'll know that it sagged that much and I'll have to lift it and rivet it. So it'll hold its shape, you know what I mean? While I rivet, or not rivet, sit here and putty it all, so. Looking at this on video, I'm definitely gonna be cutting that one piece out. You see sagging right there. This piece. I'm gonna be cutting it right here. And then all the way over here, and then right back here, I'm gonna pull it out and put a new one in, because that is sagging. I thought I'd be clever to try and use a heat gun prop it up so I wouldn't have to putty so much. Don't do that shit. It's just horrible, dude. No matter what you do, no matter how long you prop it up, it's always going to sag. So that is just a mistake that is made along the way. But besides that, we're gonna add some rubber seals down here, you know, so we don't have to add any more fiberglass and it won't scratch my paint. Some rubber seals and then seals on the window, seal, seal, seals, you know? And then the louver is gonna be printed, rivet that in putty everything it's just so much work to do but what you're looking at right here it was $70 all this was $70 flat so I bought a two pack of kilogram filament on Amazon for $40 I used a kilogram and a half so that was $35 for the filament all the way around $35 and then a $40 tub of Bondo fiberglass and here we are still so much work to be done still you know we need a rubber seal which I'm gonna buy and then all the seals around her are gonna be at least $100. And then the back window, I have a louver, which is gonna be ran alone in the summer, but that acrylic back window for, you know, weather is gonna be $100. That acrylic back window is loot, dude. You don't need a glass one with a weather strip. You could use an acrylic back window. So $100 acrylic, $100 seals. This was $70. I mean, what is it, $270, $300 if you're generous. Man, that is so much better than spending $2,500 or $1,500 on a, uh, only am hardtop someone beat the piss out of, you know? Thank you guys so much for watching, tuning in, watching my progress. I'll let you know what goes on, what I add to it, what I do, but peace out.